can you summarize the history of Singapore's rainforest in one minute? Sure, one minute. Wow. Okay, just give a sharing on this. So, fresh in mind, when Sir Stanford Raffles sailed into the Singapore River in 1819, he would have seen a Singapore covered by lush tropical rainforests. But in the 19th century, many people came to Singapore and there was clearing of this forest, mainly for agriculture. The British realized the rate of forest loss was quite alarming. And so they commissioned Nathaniel Kenley, who was then the superintendent of the Singapore Botanic Gardens, to do a study. One of his recommendations was to set up forest reserves, the Bukit Timah Nature Reserve, Central Cashman Nature Reserve, these actually contain primary forests or intact forests, not affected by any disturbance. But forests impacted by disturbance, we call secondary forests. So a key trust of our nature conservation master plan is to ensure that these key habitats are protected within nature reserves. Yeah, okay. So as a forest ecologist, what I do is go into the forest and take measurements, collect data, and we analyze the data. From that, we hope to get some insights which help us to conserve the forest or manage the forest better. And so we've marked out some of these plots and we're going to head out into one of the plots today. You can see what we do in the forest. Why do we need to study our forests? Forests are important in mitigating climate change. It naturally comes to me as something that is really very interesting to study. That's nice. So this is an example of a pioneer species. So if you look closely at the plant, you can see small little holes along the stem. And actually a queen ant will fly over to the plant, chew their way into these uh, places of weakness, and then they start laying eggs inside and they start an ant colony. They would help to prune all the climbers that are you know, trying to overgrow the plant, so they will free up the plant and the plant will be able to grow. It also has other adaptations. For example, you see these ready structures, they secrete nectar below, so they actually attract the ants and feed the ants. That is literally what ecology is. There's a mutual relationship between the plants and the ants. This pinwheel five petal flowers, right? The flowers of uh, the shawrier. Short sighted, I'm very tempted to take off my glasses. Eh? <laughs> when they flower and fruit together, they produce lots of seeds eventually that then fall to the forest ground. And usually the animals, they unable to eat, finish all the seeds. So some of the seeds will actually escape predation by these animals and they would recruit, grow into the next generation of seedlings. And that's how a forest would naturally regenerate uh, in the forests of Southeast Asia. In the early 1990s, NPARCS commissioned a study which attempted to do a stock take of the biodiversity as well as the geophysical state of the Bukit Timah Nature Reserve as well as the Central Cashman Nature Reserve. And this study was actually led by Mr. Wong Yu Kwan. Then in 2008, our colleagues searched for and located these plots with a GPS receiver. In 2022, NPARCS launched the Long-Term Forest Ecological Monitoring Network of Plots to revisit these plots, resurvey the plots. Then this will allow us to actually build on the work of our pioneering forest botanists. So right now we are in the area that we call a plot. And within this 20 by 20 meters, we measure all the trees. We identify all the trees and we tag all the trees. What we will do is that we will take what we call an embosser and then we will actually print a unique number for each tree that we see. Something like a IC number for the tree, you know. We give this tag number so that we can track individual trees, you know. Did they survive the past four or five years? How much have they grown over the past four or five years? This is a diameter tape. We always measure at chest level, so that gives you the diameter immediately. There are hundreds of species of trees that are native to Singapore. And from the leaves, then we will be able to get the identity of the tree. Let me see if I can find the leaves. Probably this. Uh. Yeah, it's from the family Phalanthaceae. So the characteristics, uh, this is too technical, so... <laughs> All right, then this is what we call a leaf litter trap that catches the freshly fallen leaves from the canopy. We collect all the litter that has fallen into the trap and then we bring it back to the lab and we sort out the leaves and then we dry them to measure how much leaf litter is actually being produced by the canopy of the forest. Uh, the collections that we make, the specimens that we make, will actually go into the herbarium, a library of specimens which have already been identified. We've rediscovered more than 170 species of plants and found more than 150 new records of plants that occur in our forest. We can quickly propagate them and ensure that you know, they, they would not go extinct. In fact, I've only been studying forests for maybe 10, 15 years, but some of these changes can take decades to actually show themselves in our data. 
These rediscoveries or discoveries are only possible because of all the field work that has gone on in our forest through uh, our surveys. 11, nothing. Actually, rainforests are very dynamic. So when we want to regenerate a forest, there are two ways that we can go about it. First is to allow the forest to regenerate on its own. The other way is that we can actually actively plant seedlings into the forest. So these are actually saplings that our colleagues have planted. This is what we call habitat enhancement or reforestation. And this can speed up the process of succession. We do want Singaporeans and residents to enjoy our forest, enjoy the biodiversity that's inside our forest. Because only by understanding the natural heritage that we have, then they will realise how important it is to protect them. So as a small country, Singapore has huge constraints on physical space, but we've come a long way to show the world how city and nature can coexist together.